Welcome to the Klaus and Q Show along with Plaudel Edwards. I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you tuning in. A brand new endeavor here, Q. Yes, it is. I mean, I'm excited. It's, uh, it's a new year. We've got a lot of changes happening across this platform, across the podcast platform, and it starts live here tonight exclusively on ON TV. You know, truth be told, you know, we had this topic planned for last month, but uh, we weren't able to last minute, you know, a, a wrinkle in the works, as it were. Right. And right. Uh, so we, we are going to cover that here tonight because we felt like, you know, this was a pretty important topic. And it's one that, you know, by and large, ideally, we would have wanted to, to do this in January because of everything going on with the new year and all, and all this stuff. But it doesn't have to be regulated to one month, right? Right. I mean, oh, this, this is something that can be transpired through the entire year. Yes. And, and tonight we're going to talk about, on our debut episode here of the Klaus and Q Show, we are going to talk about resolutions versus goals. Pros and cons to both. Because I don't know about you, Q, because we didn't really do a lot of of crosstalk before we came on the air because mm -hmm. we wanted that that dynamic that real dynamic right 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 um are you a person that sets a, like a new year's re resolution per se i used to okay. you know um not 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 now uh, you know because i kind of see um the new year's resolution as a kind of like a shallow uh attempt to make a goal mm -hmm. you know uh, the goals are a lot deeper than uh you know New Year's resolutions, and I believe that New Year's resolutions tend to wear off, and I believe that a lot of people that already set New Year's resolutions back in the first, you know, of uh, January, has already forgotten about them yeah. by February, you yeah. know? So I believe resolutions, those New Year's resolutions, they come and they go, it's kind of gimmicky. Ex <laughs> <laughs> love the use of the word, <laughs> love it. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right, and for anybody that has followed me, you know, personally, this was the topic that I did um, back in January of 2020 when I did my first stage show in Frankenmuth at Fisher Hall. Um, but I felt like, you know, because that seemed like a lifetime ago. That was before we <laughs> right. knew of a pandemic, we, yeah. you know, all, and all this other stuff. It really has, sh has you know, shifted all of our focus in one way or another here. Um, so I was like, you know, Q, maybe we should talk about this because, like I said, this was planned for for January. And I'm like, you're like, yeah, let's let's do this. We, we can retackle it. We yes. have another layer of this. But I told you when when I kind of laid this out, this is you know my overview of this, and I feel like this is becoming a more, um, you know, more of a thing that that people feel this way. Mm -hmm. New Year's resolutions in in some aspects is great because you kind of set the stage for this fresh clean slate you know what right, i mean like right. you, like people need a definitive starting point before mm -hmm. they really are in somewhat invested in doing you know making these changes because any change that you and i have have made in our personal lives i've got to believe um d d they're not easy you not know what i mean you know there's going to be roadblocks and obstacles and things of this nature i mean by by and large when you look back at a time when you did make resolutions how far into the year did they go for it for you oh man three weeks in yeah those resolutions are already out the window right <laughs> i mean it's so shallow because you, you pretty much said it uh change has to take place if you want the resolution to really become a reality and uh, the, the the matter of the fact of the matter it is that uh you know we don't really adapt to the change we don't even, so some of us even fear the change. So we Absolutely. just kind of say, and I'm going to make a resolution, maybe because the person next to you has said something and you want to kind of follow suit and you feel like you have to. And uh, also, people are looking for a reset. So once you, uh, and this is the problem, really, with resolutions, people, uh, they'll, they'll wait for that reset, you know, the 1st of January. When three weeks in, they forget about it. And then you got to wait. 12 months 
to really start over. Right. So that's the problem with people. People are really having a hard time with that reset button, you know. I I would agree with that to to some degree because it's so much of a mental thing like when, when we are going up into the holiday se season we get all wrapped up in christmas and all that we talked about that here late yep. last year um but you you come into that that week between christmas and new year's and all of a sudden this is when <laughs> the creative ju juices start flowing and like okay right with this new year i'm going to you know change this i'm not going to do that i'm going right. to make a positive yep. difference um, they wait for that starting line because they can go back and be like, well, on New Year's Day of 2022 is mm -hmm. when I embarked on this journey. The problem is, is a lot of people, not across the board, and I realize that, but a lot of times <laughs> when these conversations and these declarations are being made, they're not thinking with clear minds here. They're they're enjoying the holiday festivities, exactly, as it were. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, and b for <laughs> a lot of them, they forget that they had that conversation the night before until it's recorded on video or somebody yeah, right? else recalls. Yep. Well, you said you were going to do this, so you're like, oh well, now I kind of have to because <laughs> I backed myself into a corner, right? Right. Right. Um, then there's the other side of the spectrum that people are legitimately excited about this, okay, I'm going to do this, and they have all the intentions in the world, the best intentions in, 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 in the world, and that first hiccup, that first <laughs> oh, obstacle, man. a lot of times is enough to knock them off that path, and like, like you were just saying, uh, well, I will lick my wounds for the rest of these eleven months, and when and when New Year's you know rolls back around, we'll we'll give it another shot. Right, right. Um, you're not guaranteed next New Year's. Exactly. So what are we waiting for? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you, I mean you got to put the pedal to the metal. I mean you got to put the pedal to the floor and really you gotta you gotta shoot for it. And that's why I say uh, when you set goals, you know you got to write that stuff down. Yeah, you got to write that stuff down. Resolutions whatever you want to call it, write it down, write it down. That, that, that's the, 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 the best thing about goals is that you can keep goals close to the heart. Keep them close to your heart because that's really going to develop the success that you want. Right. Like how are you, how are you going to be successful if you can't even stick to the small goals or the small resolutions? You can't stick to it. So we always have that problem when that hiccup come and knock us right off of that, uh, that horse, you know, and you don't want to get back on because you feel like you need that reset. Yep. So, you know, we always run into those those kind of problems. That's 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 like common in society. I appreciate the the analogy of falling off the horse because a lot of times when we are met with that first roadblock or obstacle when we're embarking on these resolutions, like for those of us that are, you know, have a a legit passion for it like they really want to improve whatever it is that that they're working on, right? Right, right. Um and when you get knocked off that that proverbial horse, that that blow at the end when you stop <laughs> falling is painful, and, right. and nobody wants to be in pain or hurt or in, on any level, f physically, emotionally, whatever. Um, and they because they're so they don't want to feel that hurt, they don't want to feel that pain. They take the easy way out, and that is to back away from mm -hmm. this challenge. And this is my whole issue with the whole resolution thing, um, because by and large, I think you you will agree that the success rate of most of New Year's resolutions is pretty poor. Oh, absolutely. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And <laughs> like you you know that you have that in the back of your mind. You you can tell the whole world that you are very passionate about this and this is what you're gonna do and you're you're all in on it, but in that back of your mind, you're giving yourself that back door out. Right, In yeah. the event, and, then, and it will, it will happen every time, no matter what you work on, no matter what your goals are, resolutions, whatever, your end game, you are going to encounter challenge after challenge after challenge because anything that's easily handed to you can just as easily be be taken away, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So resolutions, 
no, I don't make them anymore. I came to that that realization that this is a back door out. And I know that. Right. And, yeah. And we justify it. Like, well, <laughs> I, it just wasn't my year, doggone it. Um, <laughs> and it's only February. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even reached Valentine's Day yet. And, you know, we're, we're already trying to think about what's coming up, you know, 10, 10 and a half months away from now. Exactly. But what guarantees you that? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> You're not guaranteed that. Not at all. Why are you waiting to achieve your success? This is where goals come into play. Yep. You and I very much goal-oriented individuals. Would you say so? Absolutely. Um, goals, by and large, have a higher s success rate of being met because they actually mean something to you. Exactly. Like you were saying, you keep you keep it close to the heart but not only that, man, you it's a completely different mindset because when you are setting a goal on something, more often than not, you're setting it because you want this to be reality. Yep. Something in your life is not necessarily firing on all, all cylinders. You're not happy with your job. You're not happy with where you work. You're not happy with what you're driving. You're not happy with what you're living in or the, or the situation or whatever the case may be. Right, right. It could be across the board. Um, but when you are setting a goal, you are fired. You are fueled by a different kind of passion, a different yep. kind of drive. Would, would you say that, oh, absolutely. that that's accurate? Absolutely. I, I kind of compare it to uh, you ever, if you ever buy a puzzle from the store. When you, when, you, when you buy that puzzle, you see the front of the box first. Right. Which is the finished product. Yep. So you know what comes out of it if you buy that box. And when you start to put it together, <laughs> you know what you're doing. So it's almost like when you, when, when, when you set a goal, you're, you already know what the finish line is. You know the success that you're going up to. You just have to put all the pieces together and do the work to get there. I, I say goals, it's, it's like a road map. It's a road map to success. And, and, and resolution, those New Year's resolutions, directionless. Yeah. It leads to nothing. Yeah. It leads to disappointment. So once you fall off that horse and you feel that pain, it creates a fear. And then you, you're like, I don't want to feel that pain again. So I'm not even going to start yeah. until I'm over the pain, which may be, just like we said, 10 months later. Yeah. So a lot of us are, are dealing with the pain of resolutions instead of setting the goals that we need, which, 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 it, it can be a variety of different times. You know, you can have a long-term goal, you can have a short-term goal, but it's a goal and you have to keep it close to your heart. And if you fall off that horse, even when you set that goal, you have enough passion because you know the success that that goal is creating. You have enough passion to get back on the horse and say, you know what, I gotta keep pushing. I gotta keep moving. I gotta keep going. You know, I'm not gonna quit because you really don't fail until you quit. Yeah. You don't fail until you quit. A lot of people feel like if they get knocked off the horse, that's it. That's it. But sometimes you need to fall off that horse. <laughs> I was going to t take the conversation in, in that direction. Yes, you're absolutely right. You do need to you do need to fail every once in a while to keep things in perspective. Exactly. If yep. things are going too smooth, um, at some point or another, you're going to run into something. That's just the way. Oh, yeah. That's just the way it is. Yes. Um, now you you mentioned so something here a few minutes ago. The long term, short term t type of thing, and how a resolution is by and large there's no direction. There's like there's point A and point B. <laughs> And when you set a resolution, a lot of people think that's a clean shot. Right. You, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's going to happen overnight. And, it, you know, but it does not work that way. And that fear of pain, fear of disappointment, to, to keep things in perspective and to keep you motivated because you, we get, you know, this success, this success, this success without any resistance, without any kind of obstacle, we become complacent, mm -hmm. we become cocky, which is a huge oh, man. thing. Oh, and, man. <laughs> you know, and this is where like the mental aspect of 
what you're trying to achieve goals versus a resolution and how much uh, you know yeah it, it goes through your what you do f physically to get to that point mm -hmm. but the mental game the mental game and your approach to it mentally has just as big of an impact on your rate of of success right oh man that's one of the biggest impacts i mean you're not going to do anything physical without doing it mental first. Yeah. And that's important because you if you don't got your mind right, then uh, I mean, that's that's your mind is the government of your body. If you think of it that way, you know, it, there's nothing you can do without your mind leading you into that direction. So that's why it's important to uh, make sure you keep a clear head. I mean, keep a clear head and, and, and take care of your mind. I mean, it's, it's, it's real dangerous to have influences from the outside. You got people talking in your ear saying that you can't do it. Mm -hmm. That affects your mind. You got, you got, you got. You might have. Uh, you might even watch a TV show that really discourages you, and you'd be like, oh, "I'll never get to where they are" or anything like that. You start doing comparisons. A lot of stuff happens in your mind that you really got to clear out before you even try to attempt to make a, even a small term goal. Right. You know, you, you can't even reach that because if your mind is clouded, and and, and you know, I want to use this analogy. I think about uh. And and. We, 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 we suffered the death of Kobe Bryant yeah. uh, 2020, right before the pandemic, yeah. right before the pandemic. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I always think about the pilot, you know, what was he thinking when he got into those clouds? You become disoriented. So mm -hmm. even when you, your, your mind get cloudy, you don't know where to go. There's no direction because your mind is cloudy and, and, and you want to get out as quick as possible but you might be in disarray because you can't see where you're going. Right. And that's important. And that's where the importance of the mind <laughs> really, really, I mean, it really plays a big part. That's probably the biggest part because you're not even going to get to plan B without, you know, taking care of A. That's, a, that's probably as powerful of an analogy I've ever heard in in terms of trying to describe that mental cloudiness. My goodness, <laughs> what an example! Because as you're laying all that out, like I can picture it, I can oh picture it God, in my yeah. mind. You know what I mean? What that vision would look like in a proverbial sense. Right. Um, my goodness, Q. That was. That took me off guard there for for a moment, <laughs> but very very well said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our minds, like you know, the the government of our body, as as you said, and it's absolutely correct. Um, and it does play such such a huge role in every aspect of life that that we do here. My thing is, you know. We as humans, by nature, like we need some sort of a re reward system. We need some mm -hmm. sort of validation that we are doing something right. We're moving in the right direction. Right, right. Setting like you have your 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 end game over here. Like this is ultimately what what I would like to do, or what I where I would like to be, what I would like oh, to yeah. achieve. But you're still down here somewhere. You know <laughs> right, what I mean. Right. And if if you're here and your end game is way in the horizon, mm -hmm. if you don't have anything that you can see to work for to to check off the proverbial list, you don't have some sort of reward system that validates all of your hard work. That road can get really super long, a lot oh, yeah. longer than and bumpy. It, yeah. <laughs> Because if they don't have anything to, you know, in their mind, they need some sort of justification. Right, I'm right. doing the right thing yeah. because of that fear aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Am I doing the right thing? Am, am I embarking on the right road? Because a lot of times, you know, we come to these forks in the road in life, right? Oh, yeah. And every aspect of life, is not exempt fr from this, you know, professionally, personally, romantically, whatever the case may be. You come to that proverbial fork in the road, you got to make a decision. Right. And a lot of times you don't have an extended a period of time to make that decision. You got to do it like right now 
And what do you listen to? Do you listen to your mind and, or do you listen to your heart? Because not all the time they're on the same page. Right, right. Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> that, that they are. And when that happens, man, you're capturing lightning in a bottle. Right. Yeah, and great. you just ride that you just ride that 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 lightning bolt for as long as it, you know, is a thing. You come to that fork in the road though, man, and like you really gotta play the pros and cons game with, with the quickness. But absolutely with with that fear of the unknown because there's nothing that tells you what's gonna take you regardless of what fork you take there are going to be these things along the way okay if i go down this way i want to achieve this by this time right right it could be a day from now it could be a week from now like it's somebody that's trying to get in better shape it's easier for them to keep track of their progress based on weight right 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 like they can step on the on the scale on day one and be like, all right, I'm writing this down. I weigh this amount. By this time in two weeks, I would like to drop three or four pounds. If they get to that point and they do meet or exceed that, oh my God, their their whole aura is filled back up. Yes. I did this <laughs> so I can move on to this. So by this date, I want the scale to say this than that mm -hmm. if we get to like a holiday season <laughs> like the fourth of july uh -oh. you know during you, you know what i mean <laughs> oh <laughs> um, man I'm, i didn't want to go too far like towards the end of the year with november and december <laughs> and all that but the fourth of july is a big deal oh yeah memorial day is a big deal a lot of people yes. have parties and super bowl is coming oh, up my goodness, here yes uh, for us it's more of a wrestlemania thing we'll get to that <laughs> late, later on but um my, my my point is is okay you have anybody that's embarking on that goal they they have that um that validation i'm doing good but right, right. if they if they step on the scale and it's not it went the <laughs> wrong direction in that period of time that's really going to test your resolve right oh yeah oh yeah and you know and, and it's funny you uh bring up you know the whole weight thing there um <laughs> I, I i just had this conversation with someone and i said uh when you're trying to get yourself in shape and you don't you don't see the results it's probably because you're not looking at the right time because mm -hmm. people will do one day one week you know, and then they, 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 they'll think that they're supposed to already have a six pack. Right, <laughs> yeah. So now your perception is already screwed up. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm getting discouraged because I'm not where I wanna be after a day, two days, three days, or whatever it may be. Now, there's a key word that I always use when it comes to, you know, trying to get in shape or, or pretty, and it pretty much goes into almost anything, is consistency. Absolutely. Consistency, and, and, and people, you gotta be patient. You gotta be patient with what that goal is gonna develop. So that's why it's important, even when you have a big goal, you know, I wanna lose 50 pounds, but you need to have a goal that says, I need to lose three pounds. You need to have those small goals that leads up to the big goals. Mm -hmm. And even when you get into those, you know, you get to the fork in the road and you're like, okay, we got the holidays coming up. I need to make decisions, what I'm gonna do. That's where you need to plan. <laughs> right. It's important when you have when you make a goal, and that's why it's it's important to have it close to your heart. Because uh, you make that goal, you have to plan. You have to plan what I'm going to do to accomplish the goal, and that's why it's important. I write everything down, everything from small goals to big goals, because I know I need that map. You know, and, and it, that's what it is. It's a map, and those maps are going to have different splits. But in a way, you need each and every split to all lead back together in the same direction going back to that success. Because if you go on that other road, which may be a U-turn, <laughs> yeah. that's when you have a problem. That 180, that's the problem. Yep. So that's why it's important to really, really focus on planning for every little goal and planning for every big goal. It's all connected. 
I, I love the idea of when you are setting, setting out to achieve a goal, writing it down, not necessarily, I mean, there are going to be times where, because I mean, we, we all have our phones right, we're all yeah. attached to our hips 24 seven exactly. nowadays, but, um, it I, I love the the fundamentalness of having like go get yourself a journal go get yourself a notebook write these things down because like you said it's like a map in so many in so many aspects as you are embarking on this thing and like you said it's important that all of these forks in a row come back and and move forward as one, right? Right, right. But it also provides documentation of your road to where you're yes, going. Yes, yes. And it is, I mean, some there's... To, something to look back on. It is, and it's the little things. Like, you see it in your handwriting. You see it the way your your passages are are structured you can mm -hmm. tell if you were writing it real fast like it was on your mind you had four seconds to get this <laughs> out and you, right, you, yeah. you know, write so something down real quick and then you see other ones with a very much more calculated more articulate more detail and you you could go back you know you, you know a week from now a month from now years from now and you find that notebook and you're going back and you're looking through it's like, wow, I remember that day. Yeah. This is the day that I, that threatened to knock me off my path and here we are. I have not only overcome this, but look what else I've done here in, in the course of, of this journey. I appreciate this because I'm doing this right now. Yes. And I know you are doing incredible things to achieve your own set of goals. You are embarking on things. You have embarked on a road that is most impressive. And not a lot of people have that kind of drive and determination. And that's when you know somebody is going to be su successful. With you specifically, and I'm not just saying this to inflate your ego i'm not saying this to blow smoke up anywhere i'm not doing any of that like this is as as sincere and legit as i can possibly be over the course of my life i i i have been involved in the entertainment realm in some regards for 28 years it has been within the wacky world of professional wrestling on an independent level um, now we're more, you know, everything is kind of shifting over to the podcasts and to YouTube and to here on ONTV. Um, I appreciate the fact that having something of a documentation of your journey to where you are going, um, it's not that complicated. It's not that deep. It's, right, it right. is you at your fundamental, most honest right. and pure. Yeah. If you're honestly writing down <laughs> what, you know, whatever honestly, you put yes. in your journal, like this is your, this is like your book of life. Yep. You, you know what yep. I mean? Because if it's on that level, and like for me, and I know for you too, it is very much like everything that I'm fixing to do here, and it actually, and a lot of this starts here tonight as we're as we're talking. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Because there are goals in place that I have put across all of our platforms here that is going to had that has the potential to change people's lives, not just the ones who watch the shows or listen to the podcasts, but like you and Jim Burgett and, and Wendy McBride Washburn and the guys on the Turnbuckle Time Machine, like I have goals in place that is going to be beneficial for our, for everybody. You know what I mean? That's what drives That's me. That's it right there. Um, because let's let's call a spade a spade. Like I I I don't want to do for a living for the rest of my life what I'm doing right now. Like it's cool, it pays the bills, I've had a lot of cool opportunities, I've met some awesome people. Um, 
but that's not what I want to do the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. And I'm with you. I, and I, <laughs> right. But nobody is going to hand us the key to the castle. Exactly. Nobody yep. is going to r r you know write us a blank check for seven figures, be like, hey, go have a good life. Right. That right. does not happen. <laughs> um, if somebody was to do that, obviously the red flags are going up, right? Mm -hmm. um, yep. I'm very much an individual. I know you are too. And this is another layer of the success level of this is what is your true motivation? Why are you embarking on your goal? Um, what is it that you are looking to gain out of it? And are those intentions, and this is the big one, and I know you're going to have something to, to say about this, are your intentions pure at heart? Right? That's it. Because if you don't have... If you don't have clarity in your mind, in your body, in your soul, but more importantly in your heart, because you can BS anybody in the world. <laughs> yes. The one person you will never BS is yourself. And if things are not running on all cylinders, if things don't feel right, we've got one life to live here, and you have all of this opportunity, things that you can see, things that may be on the horizon that you can't, but you don't know unless you embark. Or, you know, sometimes you got to roll the dice on yourself. Yep. You may not know exactly what that road is going to take you through, but you know where it kind of leads to. Right, And yeah. that's where you want to go, right? Yeah, exactly, because I truly believe that everyone was created or, or born to be something and have some sort of an impact. And I believe if it's in your heart to be, uh, to, to, to be something, then that goal is gonna be relative to that success. And, and I, I think about uh, Michael Jordan. He was born to be a basketball player. For sure. He was born to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I guarantee that that didn't start from a New Year's resolution. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would bet money on that. Yeah, yeah. Now I, I I truly believe that this man he set a goal. He set a goal. He he played ball in high school. Got cut from his team. He played ball in college, and and that was his gift. And I believe each and every one of us got a gift in that goal that we create. And if it's from the heart, it's gonna be relative to what we are meant to be or what we're meant to do in life and that's the biggest impact to me because uh you know he impacted people through basketball you got all these people that want to be everybody want to be like mike yeah <laughs> do you got anybody that want to be like you so it's, it's there's going to be people that's going to be that's going to be watching you i mean no matter if it's on a small scale or a large scale you know you got people that's under you that's watching you that 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 takes that pr that pretty much views you as a mentor even though you don't even, you might not even know it so i think that's important to really achieve your goals because your goals are going to be connected to somebody else's success yeah and i and that and that's how we we're connected right and, and it i believe that that was meant to be you know because there was a, i wasn't going to come to flint i was working in in detroit and there was a reason why I came to Flint, and I believe that this is part of it right here. Mm -hmm. So that's why I believe goals are goals will lead you to other resources, and those and, and those resources are going to help develop that goal into what you are meant to be. But this is where um, we can't stop, you know, because one of the biggest hindrances to a lot of people, they'll achieve a goal, and then they'd be like, okay. I did it. I'm done. Some Rusting of the biggest their laurels. Yeah, there yeah. you go. One of the biggest failures is your own success. One of the biggest failures is, is, is your own success. People stop when they feel like, okay, I made it. What's next? Right. What's next? You're still breathing and you're still living, so I believe that there's still something for you to do. Therefore, you got to keep pushing. What's 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 set a new goal? Set a new I I want to be setting goals in my 90s. Yeah still setting goals because I believe that there's something and somebody connected to those goals. So therefore we gotta keep pushing and keep moving. 
Absolutely, and, and I and I I love the fact that you use Jordan as an example, another example. Whether you're a fan of him or not, you can't deny the story. Statistically, is Tom Brady. Oh my and, goodness! Yeah, yes. very obviously very topical with the announcement of his of his retirement and and everything, which is I have never. I'll be I'll be fully honest. I have never been a Tom Brady. Fan. Really? No, no. <laughs> Like, I understand what, who and what he is and what he's done for the NFL and all that. I, right. can't, I can't deny that. <laughs> but I don't root for the man. Right, you know, right. I wish him well in his future endeavors and what, whatever. But this is a guy who, you know, w was drafted way down, fourth, fifth, sixth right. round or something like that. <laughs> like, his, his, his draft was like in triple digits. Goes on to become the greatest quarterback in the history of the National Football League, arguably. Um, so that just goes to show you, you know, with talent, for one, a mm -hmm. gift, um, opportunity. Oh, you know, yeah. I, he could have very well have said, to hell with it. That I, you know, I didn't go in the first, however, you know, couple rounds or whatever. Obviously, this is not what I'm, what I, what I'm meant to, you know, be or do. But in his mind, he must have known. And somebody decided to give the kid a chance and yep. look what. Look what happened. He, he, you got a oh, diamond man. in the rough. Oh, man. Stories like that, by and large, don't happen very often. Right, right. So there's not like that kind of story, that kind of success is going to get lost in the wayside with everybody else's story that has... You know, they go to college, they excel on the gridiron or on the basketball court or the baseball field or whatever the case may be. And they, they get drafted by a professional team and they make their way up through the minor leagues or the ranks and whatever the case may be. The next thing you know, they're playing on the grand stage of the big game. Right. Um, by and large, that does not happen. Um, but if you believe in yourself, if you believe if you are pure of heart, pure of motivation, you know what you want, you're willing to go through the storm. Mm -hmm. um, that's, uh, that's another analogy I use all of the time. Um, I just, uh, I don't know, man. That's why I, I feel like goals will ultimately lead to higher levels of success versus a New Year's resolution. Right, right, absolutely. Let's make a little bit of a transition here. I mean, unless you have so something else you want to add hey, to this I'm, particular topic. I'm, I'm riding with you, brother. Okay, well, I'm just saying. <laughs> we, I, we've sat here and, and beat it up for the last 40 minutes or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a topic like that, Q, I mean, it, it's so multi-layered, right? Oh, yeah. you, I mean, you can... It's important, too. Yeah, very important. It just, it all depends on who and what you are, who and what you are working towards. But... Um, I kind of want to, because this is a brand new show here and, and our format is a little different, obviously this new set here is different and, and everything. We wanted to give the show a different feel than what you may have been used to when you tuned into our monthly specials here on ONTV. Um, you know, obviously our, our goal here is to Every month we, we will be coming on the air here live for one hour and discuss a topic that is going to resonate with you, the viewers, our fans, and we certainly appreciate all of your support. Um, but Q and I, I mean, yeah, we're co-hosts on the show here, but we're also friends and we have a lot in common and we will take the second, third s segment of the show or wh whatever, the last how however many minutes and kind of touch on different aspects in real life, sports, entertainment, sports, entertainment, <laughs> um, pop culture, what, whatever comes across our radar. Obviously, um, you know, a lot of l local headlines coming out of the NFL, WWE, because that's kind of our thing. Um, but before we tackle that, I do want to make mention of a pretty awesome event that's ongoing here at ONTV, and that is the ONTV Five or Five Food Drive that uh, benefits the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. 
and you, I mean, the, anytime you can give back to the community, you've discussed this on previous episodes, you know, late, late last year when we did the Claws to the Heart live show here, um, just how important organizations like food pantries and things of this nature, how crucial they are to the community. Like you've seen that firsthand, right? Oh, absolutely. I think any opportunity that you're, that you're able to give back, that's, I mean, you're talking about a blessing. You gotta be a blessing to somebody else, because somebody, I mean, if you've been touched, you know, be able to touch somebody else, you know? So it's important to give back, you know? And I love what they're doing at uh, the, the, the OIN TV food drive. Uh, and I say, uh, stay connected with them, you know? Um, like the page, o Orion ON TV, like the page, like the, the, the YouTube page, the Facebook page, and you know. <laughs> stay connected, that's my plug, guys. Yeah, don't say, man, <laughs> just plug them in, man. <laughs> OrionONTV.org is where you can find all of the, the information with this very important cause. We certainly encourage you guys to, uh, to check that out. Uh, look, man, the stage is set for the big game. I don't know if we can technically say the the words because uh, of all the goofiness that goes with the <laughs> NFL, but uh, the big game is set. Los Angeles Rams against the Cincinnati Bengals at the 56th annual World Championship <laughs> Professional <laughs> Football Game. Can I say that? I think, I, I think that's... <laughs> I think that's good. That'll work. <laughs> you know, a lot of storylines, obviously, especially tied here in Michigan with Matthew Stafford, a longtime member of the Detroit Lions. And, um, you know, after, what, 12 seasons here in Detroit, he goes to L.A. his first year in L.A. And he is you know, on the, on the one-year anniversary of, of signing with, with the Rams. He's playing in the NFC Championship, wins the game, He's going to the to the world title game in uh, in their home stadium of SoFi Stadium right, in yeah. Eaglewood, like the second year in a row that um, the team from the host, you know, arena or or stadium is involved in this game. It's kind of cool. Do you have a, a prediction <laughs> one way or the other? Hey, I'm rooting for Stafford, man. Are you? I'm definitely rooting for Stafford and. Uh, and, I, and there's a lot of running jokes here in Michigan saying this is the closest that the Detroit Lions will be in the championship world title game. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because like the halftime show is like the a who's who of, of hip hop, right? And right, yeah. Eminem is Rip part of this Detroit, thing. Yeah. Right, and it's like, <laughs> The city of Detroit and the stigma of the Lions and <laughs> and everything like that. Hey, I, we're there. We're I, showing yeah, up. It's, we're showing up some way. It's, <laughs> it's simply incredible that it that it has that that much influence and dictation on what's going on for that game. February third, I believe it's being broadcast on NBC this year. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it's a big thing, man. Like a lot of people look forward to the commercials. I I've, oh, I've yeah. seen a preview of yeah. a couple of them. Did you? Oh um, man, I haven't seen the, any yet. <laughs> the ones with with Kevin Hart. The you know, I'm I'm a big uh, Kevin Hart fan. I love Kevin Hart. And uh, he's I don't remember who he's exactly pushing for, but um, I saw a clip of one of one of his ads, and like I was rolling. Like he <laughs> his his timing and and delivery is off the charts. He's excellent, man. <laughs> Just, He's on a whole different level. <laughs> he is like he is, like he is a beacon of a new generation of, right, of yeah. that type of entertainer, you know. And that's good because we need laughter. For when, uh, sure. Oh my God, with with 2020 hitting us, 2021 hitting us, and some people are still being hit with 2022. You need that medicine, which is laughter. Yeah. So you know, take it, just 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 take it and enjoy life by just smile and laugh. Switch gears a little bit to something that we have a little bit more passion in. Let's talk about uh, the Royal Rumble was was last weekend. Um, I I was not p familiar with the home venue, and it was at this 
big place in St. Louis. I didn't realize it was an actual dome. <laughs> yeah. Like I heard the word dome, right? and I'm yeah. thinking like the Sun Dome in Tampa. Uh -huh. You know, it, I yeah. Mean, yeah, it's a dome, but I mean it's twenty thousand seats. All when right, I think right. dome, I'm thinking like the Pontiac Silver Dome. I'm exactly, thinking yeah. the Astrodome. <laughs> I'm thinking the Tokyo Dome. Um, but uh, forty-four thousand people they got stuffed into in, in into that venue. Um, the internet wrestling community had an absolute fit <laughs> with uh, the way things worked out with the men's Royal Rumble match. That's what that was. That was the last <laughs> match of the card. Uh, we'll run through through these real quick because I I I'm doing this because I was dared that I wouldn't talk about pro wrestling on, oh. our, on our debut show. Don't <laughs> dare me not to do anything within reason. That sounds like a challenge. Well, it was. So I'm like, yeah, we're, you want, you're, you don't expect us to talk about wrestling? Well, I'm going to. It's uh, easy. Oh, I man. got 15 minutes of airtime here. <laughs> Believe me, I, I can fill it with, with wrestling talk. Um, Brock Lesnar. Uh, an hour and a half after losing the WWE Championship, he comes in at number 30, wins the Royal Rumble match. What's your opinion on that? To be honest, I've seen that coming. <laughs> I did see that coming. He was actually, uh, I predicted him to win. Okay. I predicted him to come in and, uh, and, to, and win because I know they had to get away from this title versus title uh, stuff. That they're, they're, not gonna, they're not unifying the titles. No. They're not going to unify the titles. They're not going to do title for title. They got two nights they need to feel of WrestleMania. Right. They're not going to do title for title. So uh, I, I, I kind of knew that he was going to lose that title. I didn't know how, but I knew he was going to lose that title. I, ex I expected the Usos were going to get involved somehow. But uh, him winning that Royal Rumble, I was I was not shocked. Right. I was not surprised when I heard that music. And uh, I, I was texting someone. Uh, shout out to my team leader. I was texting. And uh, <laughs> I said, number 30, here come Brock. <laughs> you, uh, you you, and I and, and Brian Balfe were – were texting throughout the course of, of the show and like my phone kept dying, like the cord I had wouldn't stay charged. It was a, <laughs> a mess. Anyway, um, so we were texting through throughout the night or, or whatever. A lot of good matches on there. A couple of them probably could have been regulated to the pre-show. That open though, dude, when they did the cold open and the video package, they went live to, to the stadium and Roman Reigns music hits right out oh, of the gate. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> and then this is just my opinion. You can take it or leave it. I don't, I, we, I, I don't even know if you know this or not. Right now in this landscape that they call sports, entertainment, professional wrestling, there is not, in my opinion, a more polarizing and a and and a guy that that elicits a, the fastest immediate reaction right now more than Roman Reigns. Oh man, I agree. It took me a long time to come around to the whole Roman Reigns thing because he was just jammed down our throats so hard. Right, right. I'm like I don't want this guy as the top guy. Like he doesn't do anything for me. But this transformation, this yeah. head of the table, tribal chief gimmick, I, abs I am 100% on board. <laughs> I absolutely love it. The story that, they, that he told was Seth Rollins oh, le man. leading up to that match and seeing Rollins come to the ring with the old shield gimmick, with the flak jacket, the yes. music, it, but still did his little goofy hand things right, as yep. he was walking through the crowd. Absolutely love that match up until the, until the end. Like, I get it, but I really would have liked to have seen a, a definitive winner. Like, I didn't expect Roman to lose the title. Um, but I expected him to put Seth to sleep, you know what I mean? But <laughs> right, uh, right. it didn't happen that way, but very good opener. Would, would you agree? Oh, to me, that was the match of the night. Yeah. You know, I, it stole the show for me. And uh, I, I believe, even with the finish, and, and uh, you know, I loved everything that went into it, the story that was told and the, the entrance and everything. And you're right about Roman. Oh, man. That shows that if you book someone correctly, <laughs> then, you know, you can you can go to the moon with them. Yeah. And uh, But that finish... I was, 
I'm a little indifferent with it. I was okay with it, and I would be, I would feel a little bit better with it if uh, we don't see DQ so often. Sure. And, uh, you know, because I believe, you know, they want to kind of extend the Rollins and Reigns thing, but really this finish is really going to tell a story if this feud continues on the correct way. Mm-hmm. And I believe, and, and it's kind of, and they, they're, they're kind of, they kind of got a short window because, you know, they got WrestleMania coming up and Brock is going to be there. And are they going to insert Rollins and do the triple threat rematch? Or, um, you know, it's, it's really going to depend how they handle the DQ after the DQ. Right. You know, and, and, and between the Rumble and WrestleMania, they're going to do the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view live from Saudi Arabia, which I did not see that coming, but... I guess if you are going to put another show in Saudi Arabia, you want one that has name identity that actually means something. Right. Super Showdown is not that. You know <laughs> right. I mean? But yeah. if you put Elimination Chamber in there, the structure itself sells the show. Right. Doesn't, yeah. It does not matter who you put in it. The structure itself is what sells the show. Now, granted. With the Saudi shows, we've all heard it. Like the like WWE gets a six and a half million dollar paycheck for coming over and doing that show. You can have your opinions of it one way or the other, um, but from a business standpoint, why would you not do that? You <laughs> it's know, a money I mean? grab. <laughs> it, 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 it is. Um, a couple of matches on there. I you know during the Royal Rumble, I was like, eh. Becky Lynch and Dewdrop. Um, anything with Becky Lynch and I'm tuned out. I'll, really? I'll, oh <laughs> my goodness! Not a fan, dude. Really? Not a fan. <laughs> no, never have been. Never will be. Dewdrop doesn't do a dang thing for me either. <laughs> um, I just that could have been saved for the pre-show or whatever. Yeah. Um, I I appreciated the mix the mixed tag Edge and Beth Phoenix against Miz and, and Maurice for what it was it was an attraction match yeah, I get it yeah. it was cool um, the women's Royal Rumble I there were a couple of eliminations where I was like well, did they have to happen so soon like 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 Molina uh, Molina comes in I was I didn't know she was coming back that was the one surprise her and Sarah Logan were were the two surprises where I was like wow I didn't hear anything about right, that yeah me neither um they leaked the round the Ronda Rousey return right, so we knew yeah. that that she was coming back you kind of figured that she was coming back to win because she wasn't going to come back to lose. Right, I mean, exactly. it's, it's, Ron, it's Ronda Rousey. She's, not, she's She's a draw. Uh, she is. <laughs> she is very much on that Brock Lesnar level where yeah. you can put her on anything at any part of the card, and it's going to draw money. It's going to draw interest. But her, her winning the Rumble match uh, gives her that guaranteed title shot at WrestleMania, and I've got to believe that it's going to be the main event of night one yes it is at at, at bare minimum so and uh lesnar's match whatever that winds up being however that looks that will be the main event of night two i've got to believe so yes um any other thoughts about the royal rumble you know what i actually enjoyed the women's royal rumble mm-hmm. more than the men's you know the men was it was kind of all over the place but the women's royal rumble that elimination with Melina, man, I felt for her. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I honestly believe that that was a botch. Yeah, I believe that she wasn't supposed to, um, you know, go over the top like like she did. The way she kind of tripped and just kind of fell. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to see a bigger showing for her, and you know, the Sarah Logan. I'm, they didn't see anything in Sarah Logan. No. From the from the beginning, so the moment that she shared with Liv Morgan. And then they dump her out. Right. I believe it was a little unfair, but uh, other than that, you know, the, the I, I give it an average, an average Rumble event. I, I expected more. I did. Uh, I expected more surprises for the men. Royal Rumble and this whole Shane McMahon thing going around. Oh my goodness! 
Uh, <laughs> That's a whole nother topic. Yeah, I, I don't think we got enough time for that one. No, but, uh, we we really don't. <laughs> we only got a handful of minutes here. Yeah, um, yeah it, I mean, it was a decent show. Like you said, I I expected more. I gave it, you know, I was borderline B plus with it because I like the Roman and Rollins was was off the charts. Saved it for me. Um, Lashley and Lesnar, a dream match in, yeah. uh, in so many aspects. That wound up being exactly what I thought it was going to be. Right. Uh, the the ending of that match, I really didn't see coming with Reigns coming in and being involved in all that and Heyman and all that. Um, but I mean, it was a decent show. Like you said, I would I would have liked to see more surprises in the men's match, but it was what it was. You yeah. Know? Um. We have a couple of minutes here left of of this debut episode, and I certainly appreciate everybody tuning in. I know Q does too, and uh, we will be back here on Friday night, March the eighteenth, for our next installment of the Klaus and Q show, airing exclusively here on ONTV's Facebook page. And a couple of days later, you can see the replay, as it were over on their YouTube channel. Just look for at Orion ON TV. Now, we spent a, a, a tremendous amount of time talking about goals versus resolutions, and I alluded to the fact that I am in the process of achieving or setting and setting out on a number of different goals, long-term and short-term. What I will say is this, there's a lot of changes happening across our platforms here. It started here tonight. This was actually, when, when you look at the, at the grand scheme of things, you can look at here tonight, right at this very moment, as the kickoff to a new era for everything that we're doing across these platforms, from the podcast to our YouTube channel, and now here on ONTV. Um, we realize, all of us, myself, Q, all of my co-hosts on the podcast, I, we realize nothing is going to happen. No successes will be met without the support of you, our fans, the ones who take time out of, out of your day to listen to the podcast or to watch us here live on ONTV. And we cannot express enough how much your support means to all of us, regardless of what what piece of this network we are we are appealing to. I would like to say that, you know, there's going to be a lot of changes coming and some of them are pretty scary. But at the end of the day, that end result, much like we, we talked about here earlier, is going to pay off one way or the other. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, just you just got to keep moving forward, you know. Uh, you, you got all these things that you've done in the past. You got all these things. Sometimes that road needs to change yeah. for, for your growth. Yeah. Really. Growth, happiness, peace. Yes, yes. A couple of big things here. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you have any kind of feedback, show topic, ideas, questions, comments, concerns, look for us over at Facebook at Klaus and Q Show. For Quadell Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate all of you. We'll see you back here on March the 18th with another live episode of the Klaus and Q Show.